Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. At the very outset, let me record my sense of profound gratitude for the love and affection that you have shown to me. Today is a historic day in our march towards establishing AMU centers in different parts of the country. Beloved Maulana Asar al Saab, other friends sitting on the dais, brothers from Kishangan and nearby areas, and other friends. My duty is just to present the bare facts regarding the initiatives that the Aligarh Muslim University had made for the last three years to move forward with the idea of establishing AMU centers within the framework of the AMU Act and Statutes. I will just present the slides in a chronological order so that all all of you are present in this uh, August audience will be able to understand mm -hmm. the scenario. As you all know, Aligarh Muslim University is a national institution. In 1950, the, frame of, the framers of the Indian Constitution gave the AMU the status of an institution of national importance and incorporated in the Schedule 7 of the Constitution. Aligarh is well known for its tradition of broad-mindedness, tolerance, and enlightened inquisitiveness. It maintains India's glorious secular traditions. It is open to every seeker of knowledge, regardless of his religion, caste, creed, region, or color. True to the spirit of its founding, the government of India had accorded it the status of a minority institution. Genesis of the idea of centers is very important for all of you to understand. While attending a function in Bhopal, my illustrious predecessor, Sri Nasim Hamad, he agreed to examine the request of the Garib Nawaz Foundation Bhopal that a second campus of AMU will be established in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. So that was the beginning of uh, this great journey. So in July 2004, the Garib Nawaz Foundation requested the HRD Minister, Sri, the late Sri Arjun Singh, to establish a second campus in Bhopal. The letter was forwarded to the UGC for action. Again in March 2005, the letter was submitted to HRD Minister by the Garib Nawaz Foundation Bhopal. In January 2005, UGC informed the Foundation that it has asked the Aligarh Muslim University to submit a proposal for further consideration. In March 2007, the idea originated from West Bengal. Sri Buddha Patadarji, Chief Minister of West Bengal, wrote to the Prime Minister of Prime Minister Sri Manmohan Singh, requesting to establish a campus of Aligarh Muslim University in Mushidabad in the light of the Sector Committee recommendations. In November 2007, Sri P.J. Thomas, the then Chief Secretary of Government of Kerala requested the Vice Chancellor of AMU to start an off-campus center of AMU in Kerala. Later, the Education Minister, Sri M. A. Devi, uh, met uh, Mr. M. A. Fatmi Sahab and requested the Government of India to start a center of AMU in Kerala. The most shining support came from the MHRD during UPA's first time. The MHRD forwarded the request of the Garib Nawaz Foundation, suggesting that it be examined under Section 12.2 of the AMU Act. So 
So many of our friends are trying to create a confusion about section 12.2 in the AMN Act. So section 12.2 is a very important uh, provision in the Act that tells us many things. I will just uh, take you to slide number 8. Uh, can you go to slide number 8? Slide number 8, please. So, here yeah, I am presenting a table for the understanding of everyone to feel convinced that the entire idea of establishing the center had the perfect support of the AMU Act approved by the Parliament. So, in 1920, we had the same provision in the Act 12.1 and 12.2. There we had a geographical limitation of having schools and other institutions to be established only in Aligarh districts. That was the initial uh, condition. In 1951 also, when the Government of India enacted some amendments, the same condition remained in the Act. In 1965 also, when the Act was amended, the same condition was retained under 12.2. When the Act was amended in 1972, the government, in consultation with our leaders, felt that that geographical limit should be taken out from 12.2. And read out the 12.2 in 1972. The university may also, with the sanction of the visitor, and subject to the statutes and ordinances, establish and maintain such special centers, specialized laboratories, or such other institutions for research or instruction as are necessary for the furtherance of its objects either on its own or in cooperation or collaboration with any other institution. So this was a historic shift of focus enabling AMU to work for the upliftment of the Muslim community as is mandated under Section 5.2c. Section 5.2c is a mandate as explained by my good friend uh, Kamal Farik Sahab. It tells us that Aliyah University has a duty to serve the entire nation, to work for the educational and cultural advancement of the Muslims of India. It is clearly mentioned. So by this change in 1972, the, the potential of AMU has been expanded beyond everybody's imagination. Again, the Act was amended in 1976. The same clause was retained in uh, Section 12.2. In 81, also the Act was amended. I shall read that the university may also, with the sanction of the visitor and subject to the statutes and ordinances, establish and maintain such special centers, specialized laboratories, or such other institutions for research or instruction as are necessary for the furtherance of its objects, either on its own or in cooperation or collaboration with any other institution. So the MHRD has advised uh, the Aliyah Muslim University to examine the proposal that came from Madhya Pradesh and West Bengal under Section 12.2. That is the route that we have taken. The MHRD has shown us a way. We should all understand that it was an enlightened attitude of uh, a secular government that enabled the MHRD to indicate that you proceed to this. I realize that it was only a window of opportunity, a small opportunity, but with the massive support of the university community and the community leaders, we should expand the scope of this 12-2 and create a new wave of initiatives that is going to be history's most important expansion sector of higher education under the ages of the Aliyah Muslim University. And in December 2007, the University Court of the Aliyah Muslim University resolved to establish four special centers, one each in north, south, east, and west, covering 
different regions of the country under Section 12.2 of the AMU Act, the permission visitor. At this point, I would like to specially mention the role played by Sri Fatmi Sahab. Just as Lalu Prasad Sahab was mentioning, as was assigned to Fatmi Sahab, the role of exploring the avenues for supporting the minority community represented by him. I'm happy to tell before you that Fatmi Sahab had lived up to his expectation. He called me once, Asi Sahib, you are the new VC. The idea of center is something that we have to undertake as part of the affirmative action mentioned under the Fatmi Committee report. Although I had told the idea to your predecessor, he was not able to move it forward. At least during your time, let us try to do that. So I remember his kind and encourages, kind encouragement all through his period as the Minister of State are in the HRD Ministry. So the resolution passed by the University Court was approved by the Executive Council in January 2008. The Executive Council modified the list, decided that it be established in Katihar, Bihar, Pune, Maharashtra, Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh, Manapuram, Kerala, and Murshidabad, West Bengal. When the, when we met the Chief Minister of Bihar, based on his suggestion, we shifted Katihar and we moved to Kishangaj. We decided to replace Katihar with Kishangaj at a meeting of the Executive Council held on 21-7-2010. On 13 2008, the university has submitted a proposal to the government of India. That is slide number 11. Slide number 11. Our resolution to establish five centers of Aligarh Muslim University in the Muslim-dominated, educationally backward, and underdeveloped regions of India. In the last decade or more, we have seen the birth of numerous new universities. All these universities took their shape in big towns and cities. When Aligarh Muslim University wanted to explore this potential, we resolved that we should go to the Muslim-dominated, backward regions in the country and try to do as best as possible. We did not want to go to Bangalore or Hyderabad or such other metropolitan cities. So our desire was to commit ourselves for the service of the Muslim community who are living in the most backward regions in this country. Even after 65 years of independence, after having traveled a lot in Bihar, West Bengal, and UP, I feel that the, the fruits of freedom is yet to reach our people. So, Aligarh University took a resolution that we are moving towards Muslim-dominated areas, and try to improve their lot for all years to come. 